It's another edition of the wrap-up show with John Schaefer and Jim Russell presented by Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance. If you have not already and you want exclusive year-round Padres content, hit that subscribe button down below, hit the notification bell, like our videos, and follow us on Twitter as well at John Schaefer, at Jim Russell SD. And before we get started about the report that Mike Schilt is going to interview for the Padres vacancy, I want to tell you about Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance because if you're shopping for auto home renters or life insurance here in San Diego, there's only one place to turn, and that's to a San Diegan. Mark at Farmers Insurance, he's got a decade of experience. He helps people like us find the perfect insurance products. And what separates him from the competition is his customer service and his communication. If you click that link down below in the description, you'll get Mark's website, and he can help you and your family with your insurance needs. All of his information, if you're wondering how to contact him, well, guess what? It's right above my head. Right there, his number and his email address, mnimitz at farmersagent.com. You can reach out to him at mnimitz at farmersagent.com with any questions you have about your insurance needs. Uh, so the report today is that Mike Schild is going to interview for the Padres managerial job. It was somewhat of a surprise when we found out last week that Schilt was out as the manager of the Cardinals. Yet we find out that philosophical differences, right? Quote, unquote, philosophical differences or what eventually do in Mike Schilt, that could be beneficial for the Padres. Here's the information that was in the athletic sources within the organization, and at least one outside of the organization, believe there was growing controversy between Schilt and his staff over his leadership tactics and communication, something that potentially came to light during the organization's annual end-of-the-year all-staff meeting held on October 8th. Schilt denied those allegations, stating, They had, quote unquote, no merit. What's interesting, Jim, is that the Padres ousted Jace Tingler arguably because of a lack of communication. The other knock on Shield has been that the philosophical differences had to do with the front office's desire to implement analytics, something that he was unwilling to do to the extent that they were asking him to do. So considering all that, does Mike Schilt sound like the ideal candidate for the Padres or not? I read that. And I'll and take it for what it is. But if that's being reported, it, you just replace Mike Schilt's name with Jace Tingler, and that's the same exact thing that happened here. And, you know, philosophical differences, conflicts with the coaching staff, um, people not on the same page. That feels like the exact same thing that happened here. We actually know it's the exact same thing that happened here. I don't really know. Uh, the extent of everything in St. Louis, but there had to have been something like a boiling point um, that came to a head for the for the Cardinals to fire a guy that's made the postseason three straight years and won 90 games in two of his three and a half seasons that he was manager. One time going to the NLCS, two other times winning the wild card game. And oh, by the way, this past year, he won 17 games in a row that team did. So he was doing something right there when he took over for the, for whoever got fired. I think it was Matheny that got fired. He took over, and they went 41-28. and 28. Um, And then the next year, they won 90-plus games. The following year was the 2020 season. That was really crazy, but still, they made the wild card game. So um, it would be kind of ironic <laughs> if the Padres not only hire a guy who it's stuff's being reported had issues with the coaching staff, but hire the one guy that Jace Tingler beat in his lone playoff appearance last year. Do I think Mike Schilt's a bad manager? No, I do not. I think he's a good manager. Do I think he's the right guy for this job? I would not. I would say no. I I don't think the Mike Schilt is what this team needs right now. If if you were to say Mike Schilt was hired two years ago instead of Jace Tingler, okay, that might I, I'd be I'd be okay with that. But I, I just think that this team needs something more, and I think that this team, this organization. Um, desperately needs like a strong personality, strong voice. And maybe that, maybe that's Mike Schilt. I don't know. I don't know much about Mike Schilt. I just look at his resume and look what he did to the Cardinals. And for him to get fired over quote unquote philosophical differences, it makes me wonder, can he work with AJ Preller? Can AJ Preller work with him? Is he going to be okay with, um, you know, the coaching staff construction, the, uh, how, how people are hired here. Does he get any say in his coaching staff? Um, I, I don't know. So we'll see. Is he at the top of my list right now? No, but 
And Padres are going to interview him. And I said, why not? Like interview everybody. I, I want them to interview everybody. If Mike Schultz available, go interview him. Yeah, I agree with that. I think they should interview him. I think he's in the bucket where he's not the veteran veteran manager that's in his 60s mm -hmm. or 70s where he's had two or three or four stops already and that maybe analytically he's not willing to bend to a front office's mold. He's 53 years of age, but he's got previous managerial experience and he's won. That's one of my prerequisites, not just previous managerial experience, but also having won. I'll say this too. The Cardinals, like the Padres, had a quote-unquote underwhelming trade deadline, right? Now, it was I thought it was less underwhelming than the Padres. They got John Lester. They got Jay Happ. And like you said, they went on the run. I think the difference between what happened with the Cardinals in July and what happened with the Padres in July is that the Cardinals went one direction, the Padres went another. Now, remember, in St. Louis, the discussion in July was very similar to the discussion here, which is, why didn't we do more? We were in a position in that division – to potentially at that point vie for the division um, with Milwaukee. Now, Milwaukee ran away with it. St. Louis didn't play good baseball in August, played incredible baseball in September. But I will say that clearly there were some people that were upset, maybe Mike Schilt included, with what the front office gave the coaching staff and the clubhouse in July. Yet they made the most of that situation. Padres had a very similar spot, and Jace Tingler was unable to make the most of that situation. Now, with all that being said, if there are communication issues, if the analytics are an issue, you think both of those could be problematic. But like you said, the guys won three straight trips to the postseason, an NLCS, a 17-game winning streak. His track record is legitimate. Based on that alone, I think he deserves a shot to interview for the job. Absolutely, 100%. He should interview for the job, and the Padres should go out and interview him. I will tell you the difference between Mike Schilt, and Jace Tingler. The difference is not the person. It's the clubhouse. The clubhouse that Jace Tingler was dealing with compared to the clubhouse that Mike Schilt was dealing with. Look who's in that Cardinals clubhouse. Adam Wainwright. Yadi Molina. Paul Goldschmidt. Nolan Arenado. That clubhouse is locked down. There is going to be no problems with that clubhouse with the players at all. No matter what's happening in the front office. No matter, no matter what happens with the manager and the general manager, nothing. Because the players that I just named right there, those guys all are high character guys. And they all they know is winning. Like all, all four of those guys, all they know is winning. Maybe not all, Nolan Arenado to an extent, but still that organization is all about winning. All they do is win. And they are buttoned down from the top all the way to the bottom. Padres. That clubhouse, they had problems, massive problems. And it wasn't just like a little thing either. It it was things that festered over time. It was things that couldn't get under control. It was it seemed like players just decided they didn't want to play anymore. Um, they were upset. Their feelings got hurt. There was nobody in that clubhouse to rally everybody and say, you know what? Screw it. Who cares we didn't get Scherzer? Who cares we didn't do anything in the trade deadline? Like, we need to go out there and we need to, to to sack up here and go and do our jobs and win. I, I love Manny Machado. There's one thing that does bother me about Manny. And I, I went back and I listened to his interviews with Marty after Andy Green was fired and after Jace Tingler. Well, not Jace Tingler was fired, but his end of the year press conference. And he was asked both times about... Who does he want as a manager? What are the types of, uh, you know, things he wants from a manager? What are the types of things he looks for in a manager? In both times, he basically pled the fifth, didn't want to answer, and said, I'm just here to play baseball. Manny, I love you, but you are the face or one of the faces of the franchise. This is not just about going out and playing. We know you have an opinion on who you want as a manager, we know deep down and you, you are thinking all the time, like about the manager of the team. And if you're not, I, it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, does, does that make sense to you that Manny Machado just doesn't care about who's the manager? Cause if that's the case, then I'll, I'll manage the team. You can manage the team. And it seems like Manny Machado just doesn't care about it. It doesn't make sense because it runs in the face of what we've been told recently, which is he's displaying leadership, leadership characteristics. 
Because what we were told and what I believe is what happened in that dugout, ironically, in St. Louis with Fernando Tatis Jr. was something that actually is a characteristic of being a leader. But typically Mm -hmm. a leader would also take on more ownership of the trajectory of his team. And the franchise. Yeah, the franchise and the staff in which he works under. Uh, He's more than a ball player. Like to say, I'm, you know, that's above my pay grade. Well, hold on. I mean, (laughs) it's not because if you had a problem with Jace Tingler, you could oust him. If you went to AJ Preller as a player in year four of a 10 year deal, next year's year four, then you could oust him. So it isn't above your pay grade. You're making $300 million for someone like yourself and Fernando Tatis Jr. Your um, viewpoints are critical. I mean, your feelings on subjects like the manager and the coaching staff are critical to the future direction of this franchise. Back to Shill for one second. Here's what I also find completely and utterly fascinating and somewhat shocking is that not only did they fire him, they needed to go to Major League Baseball the day they did it because there was a postseason game being played that day. It was so important for John Moselak, the general manager, president of baseball operations for the Cardinals, to get rid of Mike Schilt last week, that they were unwilling to wait 24 hours until there wasn't a baseball game. It was something like that. They either had to wait one day or two days to make the firing on an off day across Major League Baseball, and they didn't do it. They went to baseball to get the exemption to move on from Mike Schilt. So whatever was occurring was significant. Not to say that Mike Schilt was in the wrong. Maybe the organization was. Now, what I also find interesting is his coaching staff has been entirely retained. And yeah. at least um, one of those members on his coaching staff could be the next manager of the St. Louis Cardinals. So it's a little bit of a fascinating development. Obviously, A.J. Preller, Peter Seiler, and others will need to get to the bottom of exactly what transpired in St. Louis if they're really going to move forward with Mike Schilt as a serious candidate. But it is just shocking to me, almost like they uncovered uh, a trove of emails <laughs> that hadn't right. been disclosed. And mm-hmm. within those emails or phone calls or records showed something how he was working in the complete opposite direction of the organization. Because to me, to fire a manager who lost a wild card game and a walk-off home run after getting into the postseason, riding one of the hottest streaks in baseball history, literally makes zero sense. Yeah, that's why there has to be some type of red flag up here for this situation. Because if Mike Schilt... um, you know, did all these things and he was the manager for like 10 plus seasons. And then they just decided the Cardinals did to let him go and move in a different direction. Then yeah, absolutely. Mike Schilt would be like top of the list or at least in the top tier of guys who I would want the Padres to go after hard. But when this type of thing happens, like you said, going to baseball and asking for an exempt to announce a firing of a guy who just had, um, a crazy last two months of the season where his team won 17 in a row, a franchise record, by the way, and losing on a walk-off to a 106-win team, which is, I mean, there's no shame there at all. And you fire a guy because of just philosophical differences? There's There has to be more there. There has to be. And I don't know if you saw Mike Schilt. He came out with a uh, prepared statement. It was more or less like, a, like he read... I don't know, like an essay because <laughs> it was like 10 minutes long of him just like yeah, talking about Zoom. the organization. Yeah. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and he didn't answer any questions, but he did get pretty emotional during him talking about his dismissal from the Cardinals. So he probably was like, this came out of nowhere to him that had no clue. But again, there has to be maybe a little bit more there that we, we don't see and we don't know because why would you just oust this guy who has led your team to the postseason for three straight years over just philosophical differences. That doesn't make any sense. It it doesn't. And, you know, I understand the emotion. He had spent 18 years with the Cardinals organization. So, I mean, I'm sure he considers the Cardinals organization, you know, a a significant part of his career. And it is obviously, he said he put more Mm -hmm. into his time in the, in the Cardinals organization as a coach than he did as a player. Right. So obviously, um, it makes sense for him to be emotional. Um, I'm with you. If, if the parting of ways was different, if it was a different circumstance, it would make a lot more sense to me. The fact that it happened like this, there are some red flags, right? That's a big thing as we see right now on Twitter, by the way. There's some red flags yeah. right now with Mike Schilt. Here's the thing. You're not getting Ron Washington from what we're hearing. They're not even going to interview him. 
You're not getting Stupid. Aaron Boone because Aaron Boone has been renewed essentially by the Yankees for three years yeah. with an option for even a fourth year. So now are you getting Bruce Bochy? That's still the, you know, the it's out there as a possibility, right? I mean, are they going to interview Bruce Bochy or not? It still seems like a little bit of a, uh, a miracle if you land a Bruce Bochy, at least from where I sit right now. So if you don't have Bochy, yeah. if you don't have Washington, if you don't have Boone, schilt has got red flags, although we'll have mm-hmm. to learn more about them. Like all of a sudden, you're a couple of weeks into the search. Now, you're not making a decision still for a couple of weeks until you get through the World Series. But it's like, are you settling or are you able to do the work that is necessary with this hire to get this team in a position to contend in 2022 and 2023? And like we talked about, I think, earlier today or yesterday about the question mark of Fernando Tatis Jr. and his shoulder surgery. This is another question mark. Is the hire that you're going to make, if it's not Washington or Bochy or Boone, the appropriate hire? Yeah, and that's that's a scary like thought to have is that if it's not Bochy, it's not going to be Boone. It doesn't look like it's going to be Ron Washington, which is I just don't I just don't understand that. It just seems like whoever they hire, there's going to be questions about that person. There's, there's, there's potentially going to be some red flags. There's going to be potentially concerns because I'm, I'm not ruling out him hiring another first time manager at all. Are you? No, not a first time manager. I'm ruling out and I could be wrong. I'm ruling out him hiring a first time manager with no major league playing experience. I would too. That that's the only thing I would rule out now, as far as the next manager goes, is that I, I would, I would think they're not going the route of, the Andy Greens and Jace Tinglers. Mm-hmm. Now, now Andy you, Green had a I, little bit of playing experience, but you know my point. Yeah, like a, a guy that you know nobody knows about. Yep. Cup and of instead, guy. they hire a guy who everybody knows about because of his playing career, but he has no manager as ex, managerial experience. So yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting um, because the names are starting to you know dissipate and go away as far as like your big list goes. And I, they're in a tough position, man. They really are. And I, I know that there's only three teams out there that are looking for managers, but the Cardinals job, once that opened up, that to me became the number one job out there. Padres, number two, Mets, number three. But even then, you know, it's there's really not much that you can think of that's out there that besides Bruce Bochy and maybe Ron Washington, to me, that's like, boom, slam dunk. That's the guy. No, you're right. You're right. Uh, Here's the question today. Would you be happy with Mike Schilt as the next Padres manager? Reply in the comments section below. Would you be happy with Mike Schilt as the next Padres manager? Again, if you have not subscribed to our shows, please do so right now. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. You will get exclusive year-round Padres content. We are taking you through all angles of this Padres managerial search. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Follow us on Twitter at John Schaefer at Jim Russell SD. And until next time, this is the wrap up show presented by Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance.